So I'm going to talk about five common mistakes that you can avoid. And it's, you don't have to be a rocket scientist for this. This is stuff that you need to know and people typically won't tell you. So let's get started. Well, I think first off, let's talk about the heat cycle of dogs. It's, it's, it's good to know what the heck's going on. So dogs, similar to human beings, they kind of go through a menstrual cycle. Now with humans, it's about every 30 days. It's variable, but it's about like that. With dogs, it's typically every six months. Some breeds, it's as long as a year. But it's in that kind of time frame. So what happens is, is when the dog starts its heat, the precursor to this, which is called proestrus, by the way, is that you see some swelling typically in the dog, maybe some licking of the vulva, that then starts with blood drops. That is a very important place. So this is number one. Number one to pay attention to is what we call first day of heat. First day of heat. And that guy there is when you see first blood drops on the floor in a bedding if she's wearing some panties on her panties. That is a very important day. Mark it down on the calendar. In fact, you should have been through this before because this is not her first heat. You don't breed dogs on the first heat. Typically, they're less than a year old. We don't recommend you do any of that. Second, third heat, over a year old. First signs of, of blood. Mark the calendar down. That is day one. Because most dogs are bred day 11 through 13 after day one. That's a very important date. If you don't get that date down, then it's your first mistake. And by the way, let's talk about what humans do. So humans who don't want to have a baby, the safe time to have sex is when the menstrual cycle is beginning. You're not going to have a baby. And if you read a dog, the first stages of heat, you won't have puppies. So it's the same thing. And with humans, what we do is we do, well, we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Let's talk about that. There's number one. So the second mistake is that you breed too early. You breed too early. And too often. It's the same thing for human beings. It might be fun, but if you start hammering away, semen count plummets. And when it's time, when the egg is fertile, or the eggs are fertile and ready to be conceived, the semen count has plummeted down, and you get the big fat zero, the big disappointment, or you get a small litter. Breed too often, don't do it. You've got to start breeding when it makes sense. You've got to, because you've got a window of opportunity that is one day either side of optimum to get a good sized litter. And if you get outside that window for whatever reason, you're gonna have a no-show or a small litter. And one of the reasons for that would be is either you bred too early, or when the time came, because you know you say, oh well, James, look, this is simple. We'll just go let the dogs together and they can just have at it and they'll just hammer away at it and we'll get it done. You might, but you probably won't, because by the time that dog is ready, the male semen count is plummeted. All right. Gets us to mistake number three. The blood discharge color of your female gives you a huge amount of information. Now, we're going to get to this here in a little bit, but I have here blood that I collected from a dog. I put these in my freezer. These are blood swatches from a dog that I bred over a few days. And you can see some difference of coloration in these swatches as the, as the heat progresses. And we're going to talk about this in some great detail. Along, we're going to get the big picture and a lot of it's to do with this blood color. That is, whoops, there goes one of them. That is free information. If you ignore it, you're likely to mess up. Blood color. So blood color. How do you find the blood color? Some people say take a Q-tip and stick it up in the dog's vulva. I hate that as a solution. You soak up the Q-tip too much with blood and you get a kind of a, a darker color than it really is. The best way to do this is just to do what I've done here. Take a napkin and swab the back end of your dog every morning and keep a record of this. I put these in the freezer. If you leave them too long, they'll go dark brown. These were kept in the freezer so you could see what's going on here. You don't have to put them in the freezer. Just snap a picture of it every day and keep that on your phone. What we're looking for is a dog that is 
Day one, dark blood, darker blood maybe day two, keeps on staying dark through about day six. And around day eight, blood color starts to lighten up. Day nine, typically ovulation, blood color's gone pink. And then the next few days, blood color goes very light pink to vanilla color to not even there. Blood color can tell you so much about when this dog is ready. So not taking the blood color, not tracking it, that is a huge mistake. It doesn't take rocket science to do this. Mistake number four, too many or early, uh, I can't spell early, progesterone tests, I'm gonna just put PG tests. So what is a PG test? Progesterone levels in a female rise as this whole heat goes on. And we can kind of pinpoint the approximate time that she's ovulated and the approximate time that you should breed her based on progesterone levels. But a lot of you aren't gonna be doing that. Why? It's expensive and your vet doesn't have a machine to do it. We do sell machines to do this. And if you're gonna do a lot of this, then you should go probably invest in one of the machines that we sell. But I did so much of this without a progesterone machine, no progesterone levels, that when I first started doing this, I'd spend too much money, $150 a whack, and a couple of hours at the vet, days before I needed to. We don't need to do PG tests until heat six to eight days, six to eight days after first signs of heat for your first PG test. There's no point. You shouldn't have to do more than two or three PG tests to narrow in. If you're gonna do PG tests, and by the way, this is a great thing to do, but it's not critical. It's not, no, no one of these things are critical. It's the big picture we're trying to build up here. And look, free, 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 expensive. Definitely do these, maybe do this as well. All right, so the fifth one's gonna be dog behavior. How is your dog behavior? Your dog was gonna show you so much about when she's ready, and I spelled that wrong, dog behavior. So ignore my spelling. Dog behavior. So what does a dog do when a dog is ready to be bred? Well, the first few days, maybe it might be licking and cleaning itself. And by the way, while we're talking about that, the dogs can clean themselves a lot, other dogs can clean them. And that may, can make it difficult to be able to get a blood test, a, a blood color like this. And what the solution to this is, is to go get a napkin and put up your finger and push your finger up inside a vulva a little bit. And that will show you what's going on. Dog's behavior is a really great indicator of how close you are to the point the dog's ready to be bred. And I'm gonna show you a video here in a second, but basically this is what's going on. First few days, dog may be cleaning itself. You may see some behavioral change in the dog. You may see other dogs humping her. You may see, may see her humping other females that she's around them. But she will not let a male dog get up on her back. Now, male dogs, just like human men, can be insistent and rude and they don't understand the word no. But females will let that known to the dog. Well, not always you can have dominant females who can overpower a dog, but for the most part, what you're gonna see in the behavior is what you're gonna see in this video I'm gonna show you in a moment, which is, the precursor to this is, she's flirtatious and shows some signs that she's interested in the male. She lets the male lick on her, but she walks away. Then a day or two later, all of a sudden, she's standing a bit more insistent and her tail starts to move off to the side. That's called flagging. And maybe her vulva is even twitching a little bit. That's called flagging. When she's ready, she will stand there and let the dog get up on her back and not walk away. The day before, she may have let a dog get up on her back and walked away, even turned around and on the ground him. But she will stand there and let him do his business. That's called standing heat. That's a good place. We want to be in standing heat. So dog behavior, and we're specifically looking for standing heat. So here's the video to look at that. Two Frenchies, the one with the harness on is the female. The male dog is chasing her around. She's kind of not running away from him very far, but just kind of making him work at it. And now she's sat down. And here in a moment, there she stopped, and now she's presenting herself, she's flagging, she's allowed them to lick on him, and there he is up on her back without moving away. That is standing heat. So now I think that this is the big picture. This is the 
5,000 foot view. We're not looking at any one of these things by itself. We want the big picture. We want to see at least three of these five things going. The single best one all by itself is progesterone test. But lots of people rely just on progesterone tests and it can get you wrong, get you in the wrong place. Specific, specifically because of things like um, what are called prolonged heats or delayed heats or split heats. But that's not what we're going to talk about here. They are not typical. But you know, there could be some reasons why a PG test alone does not get the right answer. Okay, so let's now wipe all this off and let's look at this big picture. We're getting near the end. The big picture. We've talked about all of these five things you've got to watch out for. Now we're going to try to get this together in one big picture so you can see what the heck is going on. So the first thing is, why is James the expert? I'm not a vet. Why do I know what I'm talking about? Because I've done over 7,000 breedings. I do two or three breedings a day and I've been doing this for a long time. I get involved in a huge number of breedings where we ship semen to people and people come to us and I help people. So I have a huge amount of experience with this. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I've really spent a lot of time on this. I've invented products and patented products to help people ship semen to get your dogs pregnant. That's why I think I know what I'm talking about. All right, enough of me toot my horn. Let's see the big picture. Right, so we talked about day one. We want to be able to tell when day one is first signs of blood. Before that, we've got some swelling going on. That is not day one. Day one, first drops of blood. You can occasionally have dogs that have what are called silent heats. You don't see this, but it's rare. Day one. So now what happens? Well, I have taken these swaps from a dog that I swapped at its back end and took progesterone tests as we went through this process till we bred this dog. This just happened in this last 10 days. So I had to keep these in the, in the freezer so that uh, these wouldn't go dark. Because if you look at blood that is five hours old, typically it'll go brown and it won't be particularly useful. But this is a pretty good representation. So what do we see? First signs of blood, may not be a lot of it, but it's pretty dark. And that darkness gets, typically gets more deeper or, or more redder as the days progress for the first, all the way up through about day seven. So we talked about progesterone tests. There's not much point getting a progesterone test in these first six or seven days. Why? Because progesterone is barely moving. A dog that's not in heat might have a progesterone level of less than one and it won't get to a level of one till about day six. There's no useful information here. You're wasting your money, you're wasting your time. Don't go get a PG test. When the blood color is like this, and you are six, seven, eight days from first signs of blood. When you get your first test done, day six, seven, or eight, or when that happens, that is an important marker. This goes a rosé pink color about the time the dog ovulates, which is typically around day nine. And the progesterone level is typically around a five. On a, fi on a IDEX machine, which is what most of the vets use. On the fine care machine, the one we sell, it's more like a seven. And if you're in England or Europe, you've got to multiply these numbers by 3.18. So they're significantly higher. So a five in the USA is measured in nanograms per milliliter in Europe, it's measured in nanograms per mole. And where it was a five here, it'd be more like a 18 in Europe. But we get into technical details then. Okay, so now what happens? Well, this phase here, you saw the video. She's somewhat receptive. She's letting other dogs hump her. She may be humping other dogs. We can tell that she's in heat but she's not gonna let a dog breathe it. There is no getting on her back here. She's gonna walk away most of the time, unless it's a really dominant male. A young dog, not a very experienced female, coupled with a very dominant male, he may try to force the game on her. But typically, she's not gonna have any of it, and she's gonna resist it, and you can tell that she's not enjoying the game. Ovulation, day about day nine, it is gone pink. Signs that things are going to go into it going pretty quick now. And if you do a test here, I would like to get the first PG test done 
by this time. So we've got a meaningful number that's not in the low ones and twos, but something around a five, two, and eight. In most cases, the, dot, the eggs have to move down for the fallopian tubes into the uterus and be there for a couple of days before they are primed and, and mature enough to be fertilized. So that's why if you breed here, you probably get a no-show or a small litter. It's too early. We're back to this too early, too often, too early, too often. We want to look at the blood color, and we're looking for a blood color that's going pink to light. Day nine, it's getting pink as she's ovulating, and then the next few days, you can see it gets lighter and lighter to the point when she's ready to be bred. And remember, this is variable. There's no, this is a standard dog. Is your dog a standard dog? Probably not, but it's going to be close most of the time. We see a definite lightening up of color to the point that the time we're breeding her, it's barely noticeable, if noticeable at all. And she is shown one day where she wants to stand for the dog and stick a tail off to the side, let him kind of lick on her, possibly let him mount for a moment and walk away. And then the next day, or typically something around the next day, it is really gone light. It may still be a little pink to it. It may have gone completely clear or vanilla color. It may be hard to see it here. Standing heat. She's standing for him. She might walk away for a moment. You saw it in the video, but she stands there and its game is on. Bingo! First breeding. If you get there, you're probably going to have a happy time two months from this point right here. What would I do at this point? I'd breed her again in two days. I wouldn't just breed her once. But remember, we have not made this mistake of breeding too early. We didn't start hammering away down here with artificial inseminations and things that you, know, that you can force on a dog. She probably won't let you do it naturally, but we are doing our natural breedings. We're introducing it to the male. We're doing our first AI, something around this point. We're day 11 through 13, two breedings recommended. Okay, that is it in a nutshell. Now, if you follow the link down below, you can get download a checklist to get all this stuff in a PDF that you can look at. And I would really like if you subscribe to me, if you've got this far, and we do have a lot of videos, and these are downloadable streaming videos, that, excuse me, they're streaming videos. They do cost money, but they cost typically less than a vet visit, that deal with this in significant detail. 20 hours worth of videos, it gets you really make you an expert. Are you an expert after you've watched this? No, but you know 90% of more than what most people know, and probably your vets. So this really is a great starting point. I think our videos are really helpful. Then we've got videos on this whole thing that goes off the graph, all about the actual pregnancy itself and timing the well. And then we've got videos on the puppies and how to look after puppies. And we've got video courses on things like marketing dogs. I think you'll find them all very useful and we'd love it if you number one, subscribe to us, and number two, check these things out. And they all come with a money back guarantee. But we're not trying to sell you a product here. What we want you to do is have a wonderful litter of puppies. And if you do this, I think you're gonna be successful. Thanks for watching.